Hello everyone. It's nice to see all of you here today. So this is the second webinar of the Women Chemist Committee 2022-2023 Council Year Institute of Chemistry, Ceylon. So our today's topic is Women in Science and what goes on behind the scenes. And our guest speaker is Professor N. Teshini Pereira from the Department of Chemistry, University of Sri Jayavardhanapura. So first of all, I would like to invite Director, Institute of Indigenous Medicine, University of Colombo, past president, Institute of Chemistry, Ceylon, chair and senior professor, Department of Chemistry, University of Kalania, Professor Priyani Paranagama, to welcome all of you. Thank you very much. Good evening. President of the Institute of Chemistry Ceylon, uh, Mr. Head Together, our guest speaker today, Professor Teshini Pereira, and all the members of the Women Chemist Committee and members of the council who joined this webinar today, all the members of the Institute of Chemistry Ceylon, dear students, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me a great pressure and honor to deliver this welcome speech uh, in the it, welcome speech of this webinar on of the Women Chemist Committee. So this is the second webinar we organize for this council year 2020-2022. Since our theme of the year is women empowerment in chemical sciences in achieving sustainable development goals. So I'm happy to announce the uh, president of the Institute of Chemistry, Mr. Head Together. He's an eminent chemist and he gave the fullest support to organize this type of event through the Women Chemist Committee. And also this committee was established in 2019 when I was the president of the Institute of Chemistry. And so we wanted to strengthen, uh, you know, this Women Chemist Committee, and we wanted to invite more and more women chemists, uh, you know, produced by uh, different uh, state universities, institutes in Sri Lanka and abroad. So then that way we wanted to, uh, you know, the strengthen our Women Chemist Committee, and we wanted to uh, strengthen the international relations through this committee. And every year, uh, like from 2019, we organize, uh, you know, uh, uh, the IUPAC organized Global Women Breakfast. So Institute of Chemistry uh, also joined uh, that, the, you know, the Women Chemist Committee or every time uh, join this global women uh, breakfast also uh, because we wanted to uh, empower uh, women chemists in Sri Lanka as well. And also I would like to tell you that our role model and board mother is Marie Curie. She's the only, she was the lady who secured uh, two Nobel prizes, one in 2000, one in 1903 and one in 1911. Uh, 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 as a first lady who won two Nobel Prizes. So our aim is to focus on women empowerment in chemical sciences and achieving sustainable development goals. As you all know, the United Nations has introduced uh, 17 sustainable development goals. That is the theme of the year. Uh, the, uh, so our president will let you know. So through that, uh, we wanted to strengthen uh, uh, you know, the achieving sustainable development goals also. And uh, also our objective uh, is to enhance the leadership and career development of uh, women chemists too. Therefore, we wanted to organize different type of, uh, you know, uh, programs, activities through this Women Chemists Committee. And we would like to give the opportunity for eminent chem women chemists 
who has done uh, well in their uh, career and we identified uh, our own members uh, to give them opportunity first and uh, also organize such seminars that will that way uh, you know that we wanted to uh, promote uh, our uh, you know the activities academic activities uh, of uh, early career chemists and uh, you know the give them opportunities and by participating in this type of uh, webinars uh, you know that will help our members as well as the other uh, women chemists who join the webinar uh, so that will encourage them to uh, you know uh, by listening to the uh, you know their stories uh, and uh, you know they that will help them to uh, strengthen their academic careers too so we are planning in this year we have the different activities uh, already we have planned different activities this is one of them we have completed uh, you know the first week of november and uh, uh, october another activity and we wanted to organize different chari charity programs uh, uh, you know the for students uh, in still uh, uh, underdeveloped schools and also we are planning to organize uh, uh, essay competitions for that will be and also video and photographic competition for uh, you know undergraduate student as well that will be uh, you know the, those activities will be held in due course and also will be notified soon so with that uh, you know the uh, today we have identified the resource person, Professor Chesini Pereira from uh, Department of Chemistry, University of Sri Java, uh, Most of you know her. Uh, so the, she is going to talk about women in science, what goes behind, uh, what goes on behind the scenes. So we know that, uh, you know, we are very proud of you, Professor Chesini. And your participation is a profound impact to this webinar. And she's an eminent chemist. And on behalf of the organizing committee, uh, or I would like to thank you. And I'm very grateful to you for kindly accepting our uh, invitation uh, to uh, deliver this uh, you know, speech. And I warmly welcome our president, Mr. Head Together. And despite of his visit, schedule he agreed to join this webinar and uh, deliver a small speech uh, and also uh, all the members who joined this webinar uh, i warmly welcome all of you especially our members and also uh, students who joined the webinar uh, and also i would like to thank the organizing committee especially the secretary of the Women Chemist Committee, Dr. Gopika Tiruputata, uh, and her assistant, uh, Ms. Tamodi, for uh, you know, uh, helping us to organize this webinar. And also I'd like to give my uh, appreciation for uh, coordinator of this uh, you know, event, uh, Professor Tilini. Uh, she is the one who identified the resource person uh, and uh, you know uh, uh, decided to uh, the, organize this uh, webinar today so therefore i thank all of you and i thank all the uh, other committee members who help in numerous ways to organize this event and i'm sure uh, you know the you will have a fruitful time uh, by you know the listening to her webinar, uh, her speech today, I wish you every success with the important webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam. And now I would like to invite President Institute of Chemistry Ceylon, Chairman College of Chemical Sciences. 
Mr. N M S head together to address all of you. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting this uh, uh, to address uh, this second webinar of organized by the Women in uh, Science, Women in Chemistry Committee, the WCC. Good afternoon to you all. Uh, Professor Piani Parnagama, Chairman of the Women Chemistry Committee, uh, and also Council Member and VOT Chairman and uh, Director of the Indigenous uh, Medicine of the Colombo University of Colombo uh, and Senior Professor uh, and Professor Tilini Dimuna Sekre, uh, Department of Polymer Sciences, University of Javadanapura, Professor Tesani Pereira, Department of Chemistry, University of Javadanapura, Dr. Govika Tirupranadan, Secretary WCC of IKMC, uh, and the members of the committee, ladies and uh, students, I don't know whether I want to tell the gentlemen, all the gentlemen, anyway, if there is any one gentleman there, then I want to uh, say yes, ladies and gentlemen, whether they are here or not. I am lucky to address second webinar of uh, WCC. Uh, as you know, uh, of 2021, uh, there are 3.97 billion males in the world representing 50.42% of the world population. The population of females in the world is estimated 3.9 billion, representing 49.58 of the world population. Therefore, this is a very important webinar uh, for the women in the world. Then I did, therefore, the role of women economic development also very important. And women and girls make up more than half of the world's population and they are on uh, the front line. Uh, often more deeply impacted than, than men and boys by poverty, the poverty and climate change and uh, change, food and nutrition insecurity lack of healthcare system and global economic and environmental crisis. Women have a vital role in environment and development. Their full participation is therefore, is essential to achieve sustainable development goals. And in all form of discrimination against women and girls is not only the basic human right, but it also crucial to accelerate in sustainable development goal. It has been proven time and again that Empowering women and girls has a multiplier effect and help drive up economic growth and development across the board. So it is uh, came to my mind, gender balance is very, very important. What is mean that gender balance mean creating more equitable opportunities for women, particularly at the highest levels of organization. According to reports, women in region continue to concentrate of uh, lower growth sectors and lower paying roles with 3.2 percent times more women in uh, critical uh, support than men despite increasing role of digital economy women are 0.6 times in each uh, uh, in technical sector research has also uh, shown that greater representation of women in senior corporate positions will correlate uh, to improve business performance uh, in essence, diversity leads more dynamic discussions, a broader range of factors considered, and healthy challenges to conventional thinking. The benefit applied to governments and private uh, organizations. Uh, measures that uh, help promote gender balance. For instance, flexible hours and expanded parental leave, leave directly improve work-life balance of all employees, female and male. It has been estimated that uh, uh, twelve dollars, uh, twelve, uh, twelve trillion dollars can be that mean added to the global growth by advancing gender equity. Sri Lanka, it is only twenty billion dollars per year. If you can hard work, get the support of the women, at, we can increase GDP by twenty twenty five. 
we should increase current economic growth uh, trajectory by about 14 percent that is a huge amount and then uh, this effect capturing about uh, about i mentioned uh, benefit required not just a vision and uh, will but also proactive and focused measures government companies society uh, which make uh, up a key a trifecta must work together unlock this potential sri lanka has already taken step to address sources of gender equity inequality however despite the sri lanka advances in participatory democracy and it continued economic growth you know over the years participation of women labor force has fallen the past decade President, uh, persistent challenge facing women include difficulties, uh, tackling family responsibilities, with paid work, traditional attitude towards women, limited access to finances, inadequate uh, parental leave policies, and inadequate skill for modern labor market. So, in based on that, government action we have to look into that. Uh, the first actor uh, in the tri-sector effort to encourage gender balance is the government which must be built on ongoing effort, uh, bring more women into the workforce, particularly into the senior positions. In Sri Lanka, women account only 34% of labor force, just below the Asia Pacific range, that is 37%, and they contribute about 29% of national economy, one of the lowest participation rate in the uh, region. And the, if you see, look at the uh, business side companies also have a big role to play creating gender balance and here sri lanka is progressing faster than the region on average in asia pacific only about quarter managerial position or higher help by women while in sri lanka ratio rises about uh, to a third some corporations in sri lanka are working to improve entity further another important step to improve women's access to digital technology the sri lanka export development board and international trade centers she, uh, she trade initiative is an example of helping women uh, become more computer literate. Involvement of in society also very important, generally the last trisect element. Deeply rooted attitudes play an integral part in limiting the potential of women. And investment in public awareness of civic social norms and help is part for working women. Beliefs, values, attitudes, and prejudices based on tradition and historical experiences going through many levels of society. The movement of changes, change this traditional mindset, it is essential for real and long-term change. Education and awareness are crucial. Uh, school could consider ways to remove gender bias and work in uh, tandem with the companies, for instance, a sponsorship and uh, mentoring program for women eh, to encourage women to pass ways more broadly in the economy. So, uh, if you get the women in research, we know I got selected to talk about, I'm not going to detail, 10 women in STEM, science, technology, uh, uh, and uh, mathematics, uh, those areas. One is the person, Catherine Johnson, in 1980 to uh, 2020. She is a black mathematician, one of the first African-American women work as a NASA scientist. And Marie Curie, 1967-34, as Professor Priyan Paranagam said, two Nobel, he won, she won the two Nobel Prizes, Physics and Chemistry. And Valentina uh, Tereskova, 1977, uh, is an engineer, member of the Russian state of uh, State Duma, and a former Soviet uh, cosmonaut. And, two, uh, and also Elizabeth Garant Anderson, uh, that's also uh, the, uh, paved the way for women in medicine in great britain she was the first female doctor in england and overcome all significant barriers and kai and shu uh, Ang Wu was a leading figure fighting in the field of physics in, uh, chinese immigrant to the united states and uh, uh, rosalind franklin is another person is the british chemist he's the best known discovery in a molecular structure dna and rna viruses call and crap and and uh, uh, and so many are uh, like that we can identify uh, with this uh, science and even more than 20. With this percentage of scientists, uh, what percentage of uh, male uh, and female in the world? If you get the science, it, uh, worldwide 30% research are uh, researchers are women as of 2018 statistics. 
and uh, countries wise researchers are researchers uh, uh, most of the researchers are male the central asia 46 percent world 30 percent if you get the world and southeast asia is 20 percent and east asia and pacific 20 percent women in chemical industry in sri lanka if you look into that aspect service in many countries shows that Although almost equal numbers of men and women take chemistry undergraduate programs, only about 30% of the workforce in chemical industry are women in academia. The situation is worse with the 9% chemistry professors being women. There are seven uh, poor involvement of women in chemical engineering. We must change the culture and work in our child care, handling of maternity leave, so as to make our wonderful subject attractive and acceptable to all. With this view, Institute of Chemistry Ceylon, which has a proportionately large number of women students has already established. Maybe this Women Chemistry Committee is a, is a wonderful and uh, uh, appreciable. And, and at the same time, creation opportunities for women in uh, science. Uh, today, many colleagues and uh, universities aim to create opportunities for women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Institutions are now realized they need to provide uh, the necessary support and mentorship to ensure women's success in science. Uh, but in order to advance women in STEM, we need to remember and acknowledge women's historic contribution in the field of science. That is why we have to access the previous scientists who uh, work hard from inspection. The, this Women History Month uh, uh, celebrates scientists who made discoveries and broke uh, uh, down barriers in future generations for women. Therefore, this is the Women Month, History Month. Uh, you, have, you are organizing this type of uh, very important webinars. According to UNESCO Institute of Statistics, data less than 30% of the world researchers are women. USI developing a series of new indication of dynamics and shape women decision for sure STEM careers for their educational parties. So I have, I think I will speak a little bit of more detail about that. And uh, therefore UN, UNDP too is taking leading role in, uh, towards women's participation in the development economy. Sustainable development goal five, achieving gender equality, empower all women and girls. Uh, United Nations history related to all this all the 17 sustainable development goals please remember that with this new global to 2030 roadmap and the sustainable development goal this approved by the united states uh, united uh, member states and uh, 25th uh, september 2015 action has been taken by many countries even in sri lanka now and our mother our uh, national identity organization institute of chemistry Ceylon have paid considerable action uh, towards the ending of all forms of discrimination against women and girls, uh, which is not only a basic human right, but also crucial accelerating sustainable development goal, how women and girls can and will be key achieving these goals. It has shown empowering women and girls multiply effect. So this is the wonderful time to do that. Now, I think this committee has formed the correct time and the correct place, I think, Institute of Chemistry, Ceylon, has taken the leading role charged by Professor Paranagama. Thank you very much, your, uh, Madam President, Madam Chairman, for your team uh, conducting these webinars. Thank you very much. I wish all success. Thank you, sir. And now I would like to invite Professor Department of Polymer Science, University of Sri Jayawardenapura, Professor Tilini D. Gunasekara to introduce our resource person. Thank you. Good evening to all of you. Uh, this task of uh, introducing our speaker today is a great privilege to me. She is a woman of virtue and simplicity. Teshini Pereira is a professor and researcher in bioinorganic chemistry at the Department of Chemistry, University of Sri Jayawardenapura, with a special interest in synthesizing new metal complexes having biomedical relevance. She is a graduate of the University of Colombo and received her PhD in chemistry in 2010 
from Louisiana State University, USA, and was awarded the Outstanding Research Award in both 2009 and 2010. Her current work mainly involves extensive characterization of novel complexes and their biological studies targeted towards applications such as biological imaging and anti-cancer agents. She has authored a number of index publications on potential anti-cancer and contrast agents. It has been her pleasure to guide many undergraduate students to embark research careers and to be engaged in national service by serving as a um, um, and uh, serving as General Secretary of the Sri Lankan Association of the Advancement of Science. She served as President of the Chemical Science Section of CLAS in 2019 and is currently its editor. She is an avid advocate of improving English language and other soft skills in undergraduates to achieve their career aspirations. I feel elated to introduce Professor Teishini to everyone today to address what goes on behind the scene, woman in science. Professor Teishini Pereira, the virtual platform is yours now. Thank you very much indeed for those, for the kind words of introduction. Just give me one minute to share my screen with you. Hello, everybody. So um, thank you very much once again for that kind introduction. And um, I definitely consider it an honor and a privilege to be talking to you today. And I'm really humbled that uh, Professor Priyani Paranagama, the president of the Women's Committee, um, Women's Chemists Committee actually extended this invitation to me to talk to you a little bit about work-life integration of chemists. And I sincerely thank Professor Tilani Gunasekara um, for the opportunity. So um, I've actually decided to give it a twist of my own and title this talk, Women in Science, What Goes On Behind the Scene? Because I think that the most important aspect of a woman scientist is actually what shapes and molds her and makes her achieve what she sets out to achieve, to be on par with others, irrespective of gender. And I sincerely thank the Women Chemists Committee of the Institute of Chemistry Ceylon for the tremendous effort taken and good work done since its inception in 2019. So science, I believe, is um, you know largely dominated, it has been largely dominated by men for many years. It's clearly evident in this photograph um, where you know I urge you to look for female representation. And of course, I think that over here you would be able to spot Marie Curie, the lone female scientist among the greats of Albert Einstein, Ken Rutherford, and so on. Now, over the years, we see some leading female chemists emerging who have made significant contributions to science. And it is only now been reflected by the number of female uh, Nobel laureates in chemistry. It is more evident, I believe, in this photograph taken at the ACS Spring Meeting, where I believe that all genders are aptly um, represented. And we see that women are increasingly contributing to science, and we've come a long way from the story of Rosalind Franklin, who was ignored in spite of her phenomenal contribution to determine the structure of DNA. I believe we've come a long way, and that now women are being increasingly recognized. Now, in this landscape, 
It is heartening to note the women chemists of Sri Lanka setting their mark on the global stage. And you see some familiar faces here. You see Professor Nilvala Kotegoda selected as one of the nine inventive women of the world. You see Professor Methika Vithanage, who is among the top 2% of scientists in the world. You see our own Professor Priyani Paranagama. You see Professor Savitri Kumar. So we see that this landscape, so to say, is changing. And we have women scientists who have set their mark on the global stage. Now, we see that women are increasingly contributing to science and chemistry, even though the playing field is definitely not level. So um, what I want to share with you in my talk today is um, that it is indeed possible for us to make some sort of contribution uh, which matters globally and that um, we are here to stay. So um, I think that of course, um, this picture tells you everything. It tells you everything where, um, you know, we have um, a super mom in a woman, right? We have um, super mom, a, a career woman, a doting wife and housewife, all these roles merged into one, right? And then I'm telling you that all this is possible simply because women can multitask and men cannot. Now, I hope the few uh, male students in the audience today will definitely not take, um, you know, hurt, will not be hurt, but they would, that they would one day help their female counterparts to achieve uh, this multitasking. So um, as I was saying, all this is possible because women can multitask and men simply cannot. Our minds work fast um, in task switching. Believe me, I have firsthand proof, which I'm not very comfortable sharing to such a wide audience, but I can assure you um, that you can safely believe me. From a mundane task, such as what to have for dinner tonight, our lives are always engaged with planning and carrying out a task. And if we left it to the men, they would think about it when the hunger pangs come. Look no further. Take all the recent men that we have had governing us. And we had to be out of petrol, out of gas, out of medicine in order for them to make the next order. But I believe that if a woman was in charge, it would definitely not have been the case. Now, just recently, I was listening to a talk um, by the only winner of Asian origin of the prestigious Linear's Prize, um, Mr. Rohan Pethiagoda. So in his commencement address, at the, universe, at the convocation of the University of Sri Jawadalapura, he noted that women have common sense and which men sadly lack. So I think that when it comes to being a woman chemist, a career woman, plus all these other roles that I spoke to you previously about, I think this common sense comes in very good use and I urge you to keep using it. Now, I just thought that I would give you a little bit of background about myself and my academic journey, simply um, to help me fill in little points that I want to stress today. So um, if I look back at my um, academic journey, you would see that um, getting involved in many activities while at school and beyond have actually molded me and encouraged me to be what I am today. Now, I encourage you to do the same. Although at this point of time, you might not really realize it later on, I believe that you will appreciate how those actually determine how you interact in society, how you interact with your peers 
and how you face the challenges that you're bound to face in life. Now, throughout your journey as a woman chemist, you meet many people who actually influence and shape you to be who you are. And um, during my journey, I believe that I've had the good fortune of having um, the most wonderful mentors and friends and colleagues. And um, I still remember how, uh, as a second year undergraduate, how I was mesmerized by Professor Rohini De Silva when she walked in to do my coordination chemistry lectures. And then getting to know her more actually shaped me to be who I am today. And of course, um, I remember with much love and, um, and, and happiness um, the motherly role that Professor Hevage played. And of course, I think Professor Deranya Gala and uh, Professor Hevage have been my closest mentors. And I think that you are bound to join the workplace as you step into society. So I did the same. And I believe that uh, at the University of Sri Jayawardenepura, I found a mentor in Professor Ajit Tabe Sekhar. So um, I just want to tell you a little bit about what I do as a scientist. And um, of course, I need to introduce my um, postgraduate supervisor to you. So I was really fortunate because I had the good fortune of being trained as a synthetic inorganic chemist uh, under the renowned distinguished professor Luigi Mazzilli at Louisiana State University. And um, some of you I know will move on to do your graduate studies. And I can assure you that from my experience, it will be a unique one that you can enjoy. So um, the fact that, you know, I spent endless hours at the basement of the uh, Chopin Hall at LSU, uh, running NMRs, you know, into the late hours of the night, till you do it because you're passionate about it and you are learning something. And hopefully you learn something that you can actually give back, maybe back to your home country, um, or maybe you flourish wherever you are. So um, once I came back to Sri Lanka, I actually wanted to introduce this niche area of metallopharmaceuticals. And um, I think during my uh, postgraduate research, I was one of the, uh, I think I was just the fourth out of 48 students to graduate with a PhD from the Marzilli Laboratory in exactly four years. So I think that itself speaks volumes of the amount of hard work that you need to put in where it matters. So during that time, you know, it ignited in me a love for inorganic chemistry, a love for metals, and a love for metals in medicine. So that upon my return to Sri Lanka, I was determined to jumpstart this niche area of chemistry in Sri Lanka. So let me just talk to you uh, very briefly about this research field that I'm passionate about in order to give you a good glimpse of how you should be able to handle this. So um, if you talk about metals in medicine, you know they, are, they, are used, um, they have been used in medicine throughout history and there are many time-tested therapeutic interventions. So metals may be prepared in complex herbal preparations, or maybe they're used on their own. So that brings to mind cisplatin, you know, the serendipitously formed cisplatin, which is still a widely used chemotherapeutic. And um, of course, that brings to mind a famous quote by uh, Barnard Rosenberg. You can see him on this image and hence most of the inspiration to some of the work that I've carried out in Sri Lanka. So if you talk very briefly about this drug discovery process, you know, our role is an important one as chemists and as women chemists, because we enter the pipeline so many, many drugs, 10,000 to 15,000 drugs actually enter this pipeline of drug discovery. 
but only about 250 compounds, you know, will uh, be developed as drugs and um, actually uh, have some preclinical studies done on them, right? So I believe that um, through our work in Sri Lanka, we've actually pitched somewhere here, right? And results obtained at this stage will determine whether a drug will move, actually move on to the clinical research phase or not. So then um, this lovely area of metal-based pharmaceuticals, which you can use for the diagnosis of diseases, to actually treat diseases, and in a very modern context, that of theranostics, which is a magic molecule which can diagnose and treat both at the same time. So actually, I've been lucky enough with the support of the University of Sri Jayawardenapura, for which I'm eternally grateful. I was able to actually start this field of chemistry in Sri Lanka. And uh, we see that, you know, uh, we were able to make uh, many organometallic compounds you know, at the undergraduate laboratory of the University of Sri Jayawardenapura. And uh, we've gone on to actually, you know, propose many of these compounds as metallopharmaceutical drug leads. And of course, um, I don't want to get into the details of this, but this will just give you a glimpse that um, we've been able to contribute towards um, platinum-based diagnostics and um, a new field is that non-radioactive rhenium complexes are gathering attention for the anti-cancer activity. So in 2019, two papers actually came out at the same time. And um, one had to, again, you know, when it was in press, it had to go back and cite the other paper. So it was really interesting, the amount of interest in these uh, cold rhenium complexes. And I'm indeed deeply humbled to point out to you that we did just that in 2016 through an undergraduate project carried out at the University of Sri Jawadhanapura, where we actually designed rhenium compounds um, in targeted anti-cancer therapeutics. So there's a lot of work that we've actually been able to do and uh, to make our mark on a global setting and uh, most of the students, most of it was through undergraduate students and one MPhil student. And of course, um, you know, uh, it's nice when they move on to do uh, other things. So I just want to show you that um, we've actually filed a patent recently for the anti-cancer activity of some of these compounds. And um, that uh, we, we proved a new approach in theranostics where our group was following a three-pronged approach where we um, study rhenium complexes as model systems for 99M technesium imaging. And um, we studied them as model systems for beta emitting rhenium, which would then have a therapeutic potential. And of course, cold rhenium complexes themselves can exert cytotoxicity. So actually, I'm very thankful um, to many collaborators who actually um, helped me do this. So very simply put, um, we formulate that in Sri Lanka, in our lab at the University of Sri Jawadhanapura, we formulate new metal complexes, you know, which can benefit mankind in terms of their various unique features. And I'm happy to note that I collaborate with biologists so you see the first person that I collaborated with um, is my collaborator for life, uh, my husband, Inoka. And um, of course, um, uh, there are two Dr. Samiras that I'm working with. So one of them helps us to test the biological activity of our compounds. And um, we have um, the other uh, Dr. Samira, uh, a renowned um, computational chemist helping us, you know, uh, to do, uh, to notch up our work, so to say. And um, of course, I'm indeed lucky to collaborate with Dr. Frank Fronzek, a crystallographer, Pi Zolons from uh, Louisiana State University, 
and you'd see that he was the first individual to publish over 1,000 CSD communications, and he was felicitated by the CCDC in 2016. So just recently, we've also stepped out into, you know, kind of um, using the many ligands that we synthesize as sensors, and um, we see that uh, we, in our latest uh, conquest, uh, we actually collaborated with Dr. Asita Kure. So um, indeed, um, I think that I come from a strong a background of a close-knit family. I'm the daughter of a working mom. And um, right now, as my husband pointed out, I think I'm the only female within my extended family to be in multiple roles, that of a mother, of a wife, a career woman. So um, I'm definitely not a feminist. Um, but um, I'm one who strongly believes that women should be given their due place in society. I stress on the words due place. It might not be an equal place. It might even be something higher up in the ladder, depending on the circumstance. And um, why do I say I'm not a feminist? Because uh, I still like it when a gentleman opens a car door for me and I cannot be a hypocrite. So, um, but jokes aside, I think that women need to know how to hold their own. And you as young women, when you go out to society, you need to know in the largely male dominated settings, right? How to hold your own. So you're bound to step out into these settings as you graduate and you join the workforce. And um, a large part of it, I believe, comes from being true to yourself and not bowing down to peer pressure or societal norms of what is expected, but doing what is right. So I'm going to, you know, kind of give you some little tips. And the first such tip is um, to do things on time and to manage your time. Now, I still remember how, um, you know, for the first grant that I wrote, I had to actually get up eight times in the night. Um, I had a small baby. My elder daughter was very small at the time. She was just a few months. And um, eight times I had to put her to sleep. And eight times I had to drag myself out of bed, having fallen partially asleep. But I still wrote that grant and I got it. So I encourage you um, to do the same. And uh, if you talk about time management, you know, there's this time management matrix which you might find useful because um, if something is urgent and important, you should do it now, right? So um, if there are things which are urgent but which are not so important, you can kind of browse through them and do them very quickly. But if there are things that are not urgent but important, you know, such as your relationships with others, with your friends and, you know, uh, recreational activities, right? You still need to spend some time on them for yourself. And uh, if there are things which are not urgent and not important, um, they're definitely time wasters. So you can actually kind of reject or uh, decrease the time that you spent on them. So I think um, in today's context, these words of attention management are also very, very important. It is a practice of controlling your attention. And um, in today's scenario, where there are so many distractions around you, I think that it is very, very important for you to have your focus in life and uh, for you to learn how to actually direct your attention to your focal point at each time. So, of course, now, one might feel burned out, you know, during all these um, uh, things that you set out to do for yourself. And uh, we all have ups and downs. And sometimes things come to you easily. But maybe sometimes you need to work your whole life to achieve them. And sometimes you might need, uh, think that you need a break. So if you feel that, then by all means, take it. Each time when someone is in a big place, I think it's very common um, that people want to achieve more and more. 
and you're never satisfied with what you have already achieved. But I think it's also important to enjoy life and that the little things uh, in, in life really matter. And um, if you feel, you know, that you still need to let go of things, I think you need to take that well-reserved break. So I remember my experience um, being one of the youngest general secretaries of the Sri Lanka Association for the Advancement of Science and a female one at that. You know, I felt very important then. I had my own parking slot in front of the premier organization of scientists in Sri Lanka, but I decided not to continue on to my third year as gender secretary because again, I took time to have uh, my second baby and um, I needed a full one year off. So um, it's more a case of, you know, working through the night and uh, it's also more a case of um, not taking up tasks if you cannot give 100% towards that task. And um, um, of course, I think it's really important that you have good friends and a strong social supportive network because um, there's high-end research now to show that it can actually relieve stress. So there's research done at Carnegie Mellon University, which actually says that and uh, also many other researchers. So um, it's just a glimpse through uh, some of my closest friends and of course um, my two daughters over here. Um, so those are your, you know, uh, the stress relievers, so to say. So of course, I think, you know, sometimes you just need to go uh, and do the things that you're passionate about. Just because you're an academic does not mean that you're doing only that. You need to give back to society um, in many ways. And um, what I believe has been one of my greatest contributions to enrich young minds towards innovative thinking in science has been the this uh, little science kit, uh, the little scientist kit. So in Singhala, we call it the Punchi Vidyadnayo. So it's a science kit, uh, which um, I spearheaded together with um, a group of contributors. So again, you see the name of Professor Nilvala Kotegoda here. Um, and um, of course, um, during my tenure as president of Section E2 of SLAS, we were able to put this together. So it's a beautiful science kit for school children of grades six to nine to generate interest in science. And um, it is available at the SLAS office. And um, the, now we see that there are many people who want to buy it to give back to their you know, rural schools that they learn science from. So I think all in all, it's um, a really nice trend and it gives you a lot of satisfaction to see um, how you can actually intrigue young minds um, in science. And of course, being um, in academia, I think it's, it's a win-win situation because um, you know there are many interests that uh, you may have and uh, you can actually uh, harness those interests, uh, by, you know, uh, by, by being with the students and it helps you to be young and, you know, take part in the activities. So this is a winning team of the University of Sri Jawadhanapura, um, you know, um, where they emerged uh, winners of the inter-university um, chemistry quiz competition organized by the Institute of Chemistry, Silo. So there are many things. And of course, um, it's also been really nice that, um, you know, there are many students um, who've actually won awards. Um, so specifically in the past two years, I'll just point out to you, I think um, some of the students here may know Imisha. So uh, Imisha actually won the Sultan Bawar Award for Chemistry in the year 2022 for her undergraduate work. So I think um, it's a tremendous prestige to have been um, a mentor uh, of an undergraduate student who won the Sultan Bawa Award um, in research. And of course, um, so we have here again too, um, so Imisha together with Pumi. 
So um, they emerged as silver medalists of the Royal Society of Chemistry. And uh, we see Ms. Shiranti here, um, who actually um, won the award for the best innovator in health sciences in the year 2022. So it's been um, a privilege and a tremendous um, experience to be actually um, inspiring women scientists. And um, it's something that I really hold close to my heart. So um, you see that there are many students. I'm only showing a team of young scientists from the University of um, Sri Jawadhanapura. But I believe I have mentored a few um, from Institute of Chemistry, Ceylon, as well. And um, it's nice to note that many of these students that, you know, so I, we mentor many students, but I've just picked out the undergraduate students that I've mentored and uh, the postgraduate students I've mentored. And we see that they are already making their mark. So you have Dr. Kokila Rana Singha, uh, the uh, TWALS grant recipient. Um, they were uh, together with Dinendra, were my first undergraduate students um, here in Sri Lanka. And um, we have just recently, Amali called me and Nalin called me to say they have defended and they'll be taking up positions at the MD Anderson Cancer Center and at the University of California School of Medicine, San Francisco. So I think that, um, you know, they have made their mark and uh, they will uh, do great things. And it's been uh, a tremendous opportunity for me to have been able to guide them towards achieving um, all this. And of course, um, I want to give you, so there's a final few minutes, I believe, um, of my talk. And um, I just want to give you a few pointers. So um, I think that women scientists are doing exceptionally well and that they're contributing significantly towards science. And um, I strongly encourage you yourself uh, to give back to society to your country, to the world, in whichever capacity that uh, you can, wherever you may be, and uh, not to get engulfed in an all too material world that beckons you each minute, or maybe I should say each second. And um, I think what really matters in life is um, to be fair, as fair as you possibly can, and never to be unjust, even if you cannot help it, and um, whichever religion or philosophy you follow. And um, I want all of you to enrich yourself and to build up yourself professionally. There are things that you need to achieve um, at each step of your life. And uh, I urge you to seize those opportunities and uh, to balance your life where you mingle with your friends, with your family, with your colleagues, you know, like it's not only academics, it's it's, it's whole, whole scenario out there which you have to take care of. And one day you will reap the benefits where you can actually contribute to society and be recognized as a strong scientist. So I wish all of you uh, young ladies um, as well as the few male students in the audience, I shouldn't leave them out, um, a very bright future, a future where you can fly and soar into new heights. And I thank, um, so this is just a thank you slide of every, everything that has shaped me. So you see the logo from my school, Hey Victoria Nostra Fides. This is our victory even our faith. Um, you see the University of Colombo, the University of Sri Jayawardenepura, and the Institute of Chemistry, Ceylon. I followed the first two years um, there before I got selected for the special degree program. And um, of course, the Sri Lanka Association for the Advancement of Science and LSU. So again, I would like to um, thank the audience for being here with me today. It's a rainy day. Maybe you were sleepy, but I see that you're still there. So um, thank you very much indeed for this opportunity. And I again thank the WCC um, 
for having invited me. Thank you. Thank you. It's such an interesting session. So now I would like to invite Secretary, Women Chemist Committee, Institute of Chemistry, Ceylon, Dr. Gopika Tiripuranatha, to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you, Kamudi. So very good evening to all of you. It is my privilege to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of the Women Chemist Committee of the Institute of Chemistry Law to those who contributed immensely to successfully organizing the second webinar of the council year 2022-2023. First of all, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to our guest speaker, Professor Tejini Pereira, for sparing her valuable time with us today, despite her busy schedule, and providing an interesting talk on women in science, what goes on behind the scenes, and sharing her experience on how to train herself and overcome all the obstacles. My special thanks to Professor Priyani Paranagama, the chairperson of the Women Chemist Committee, Mr. NMS Hetigedera, the president of the Institute of Chemistry Silo, and all the Women Chemist Committee members for their valuable support and guidance. I am grateful to Professor Tilini Gunasekara for introducing our guest speaker. I would like to extend my appreciation to Ms. Tamudi, Tamudi for comparing the event and her support in organizing this webinar and other activities. Last but not least, I take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to all who have joined us today via Zoom. Thank you all. Over to you, thank you. Thank you, Madam. And thank you all for joining with us today. Let's meet again with our next webinar session. Have a good day.